everyone. Thank you so much for coming. We're so happy you're here to begin the seventh annual Student Scholar Day Conference. We've got a great presentation to uh, start the morning with. We want to have a special welcome to our Board of Trustees who we really appreciate coming. So I'm going to introduce the mentor, Dr. Christy L. Duran, and she's going to tell you all about her student. So welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Stefan Ortega, and he's been doing a research project with me uh, since the, over Christmas break, actually, the right before Christmas break. Um, this was a project that was inspired by a class uh, assignment that I had a student do last year, and she found some really interesting things in her um, uh, independent class project, and she graduated, and Stefan uh, decided he'd be interested in continuing this work. So, uh, please help me welcome Stefan Ortega. Hi, so thank you. Uh, my name is Stefan Ortega. Um, I'm a fourth year student. Um, I, uh, my major is cellular and molecular biology. So plants are a little bit different than what I'm used to actually studying. Um, so here I am. Uh, I'm nine years old in this picture. This is here at Adams State. I am receiving the first prize in the, the science fair for botany. So little did I know that project turned into something else. <laughs> so, um, so my project, uh, it's entitled Nitrate Uptake and Root Hydraulic Conductivity in Bean and Corn Plants. So first off, I'd like to just uh, get started with a little bit of background um, with roots. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of functions of roots. Uh, four of the main ones are support, storage, absorption, and conduction. So they actually, uh, the roots help support the plant to the ground. Uh, they store nutrients um, and they, uh, most important uh, is uh, the absorption and the con uh, conduction of nutrients and water. So here's just a basic structure of the root. Um, you can see there's many different layers. Um, there's quite a bit going on here, but for my project in particular, uh, I was mainly looking at uh, the uh, conductivity within the root hairs, and that's just because most of the absorption seems to happen at that area. So, what is hydraulic conductivity? So hydraulic conductivity is how easily water can get transferred through the membrane of the cells. And this is, a, this is variable. So it's variable based off of environmental conditions. So for example, if your plant is wilting, uh, the, hydro, the hydraulic conductivity will try to increase to try to get more of that water to go into the plant and increase that trigger pressure. If the plant has plenty of water, it wants to decrease its hydraulic conductivity so it can retain that uh, target pressure without getting any more pressure than it needs. But plants need more than just water. And uh, there are several nutrients that plants need from micronutrients to macronutrients. But the three main ones that they need are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And out of the three, the most important is nitrogen. It's always the limiting factor of plant growth. So nitrogen, what is it good for? Um, pretty much overall plant growth. Again, it's the limiting factor of plant growth. So uh, if you have plenty of nitrogen, you're going to have a nice, healthy plant. Um, it's very important for the chlorophyll. And the chlorophyll is uh, uh, the organ that the plant uses to obtain its energy from the sunlight. It's what actually carries out the photosynthesis. So without the chlorophyll, the plant's not going to live. Um, it's important for protein synthesis, and proteins are the building blocks of the plant. They're what makes us, and they're with, uh, the exact same things that make the plants. And it's important for metabolism, and also important for the seed and fruit development. So here's nitrate. Um, it's an ion. Um, it's water soluble. Um, it holds a negative charge. So because it is water soluble, uh, the plant is able to pull it into itself by bringing in more water. Um, when it brings in more water, most likely there's going to be nitrate in there. So there's two ways that water and uh, nutrients get into the plant through the root. So here we have the root hair, and uh, the first way is the symplastic and transmembrane pathway, where water enters in through the uh, root hair, it travels through the cytoplasm of the cells, and where it finally ends up in the middle of the root or the xylem. The second way is the apoblastic pathway, enters in through the root hair, gets transferred in between the cell wall and the cell membrane, where it again ends up into the xylem. Uh, water enters in through the root hair by the assistance of the aquaporin. And the aquaporin is this green protein right here. And it's bound within the cell membrane 
And um, just a quick uh, background on the cell membrane. These uh, uh, little round things here, so what we call the heads, are, is a hydrophilic layer. So these heads really like water. Um, they, can, you know, they can interact with water. They're perfectly happy with water. But all these little tails down here are lipids, and they're hydrophobic. They do not like water. They like water to be as far away as they possibly can. So water, on its own, can get through the cell membrane, but it has a lot of trouble. It doesn't like to get through that um, hydrophobic layer. So this aquaporin helps get that water into the cell membrane, as well as the other nutrients. And this is what directly um, alters the hydro, uh, hydraulic conductivity. So there was a study that was conducted uh, by a group in Harvard. Um, what they did is they looked at two different plants. They looked at um, uh, tomatoes and cucumbers. And they wanted to see if the hydro, hydraulic conductivity was affected by nitrogen levels. Um, so here, uh, there's kind of a lot going on here, but the most important line to look at is this black line right here. And as you can see, uh, it, it, there's, going, there's this increase in uh, the amount of nitrogen that the plant is uptaking. And down here, where there's no nitrogen, it's not really it's not doing much. The roots aren't pulling up as much. So what they showed from here is that the hydraulic conductivity is affected by nitrate and nitrogen within the soil. So uh, like Dr. Grant stated, this uh, idea of the project came up with a student um, doing an independent uh, study for a class where she wanted to compare the hydraulic conductivity between beans and corns. And the reason she picked bean and corn is because the last project that Harvard conducted, they conducted on two plants that are known as dicots. And she wanted to compare whether the dicots are different than the monocots. And the basic difference between the two is the vascular tissues of the root systems. And when she did this, um, she actually found out that there wasn't any difference between the dicot and the monocot. But what she did notice was there was a difference within the hydraulic conductivity between the bean and the corn for some reason. It didn't have matter if it was a dicot or a monocot, but rather that it was just the bean plant. There was something going on with the bean plant. And this was done by Arwen Milroy last year in 2013. Um, she graduated last year. She's currently uh, got accepted to CSU. Uh, she's uh, obtaining a PhD in um, horticulture. And this led to the question, is hydraulic conductivity in response to nitrate concentration different between corn and bean plants? And this was uh, tested using a split root system. So that brings the question, what is a split root system? You know, when I started this project, I had never heard of a split root system. So here's a quick diagram of what's going on. So the split root system is a way that we can evaluate the root systems in uh, different, different parts of the root system within the same plant. So we have a plant here, the roots are split in half, uh, they're in two different solutions. So for example, in my research, I uh, put in a high nitrate concentration on one side, a low nitrate concentration on the other side. Um, it's aerated uh, because the roots need oxygen to function properly. And whenever the plant pulls from either side, pulling the solution up from the roots and goes into the plant, it pulls it from this beaker over here, and this beaker is on a scale. So when the plant takes up uh, a solution, the mass on the scale goes down. And this was an effective way of measuring the hydraulic conductivity of the root system. So the problem that I ran into initially on this was I was growing my plants in soil. And the roots didn't develop very well. They were very small. They were very hard to deal with. And they didn't sit in the solutions very well. There wasn't enough roots to use. So the solution to this to get bigger root systems was to use hydroponics. And hydroponics is a way to grow plants without the use of soil. Um, it's very big in the agriculture business right now. Um, so basically here's what's going on. Um, this is my little drawing I did the other day. Uh, so, let's, so basically uh, I have the plant growing in perlite. It's a kind of a rocky kind of white substance. And um, the perlite is just in a regular plastic cup that you can buy at the store. And it has holes in the bottom of it. So it's basically allowing some of that uh, solution to get into the cup. And this just basically sits in a solution of uh, high nutrients. Um, and it's just allowed to grow there. And the idea is that there's a low amount of nutrients at the top and a very high amount of nutrients at the bottom. 
So what the plant's naturally going to do is it's going to grow its root systems down to the bottom and try to pick up as much nutrients as possible. And this greatly affected the root systems of my plants and it made it much easier to actually evaluate them with the split root system. So I grew these plants. Um, this is uh, the bean plants at maturity or what I consider to be maturity for my case. Um, I used uh, the plants between two and four weeks old. So I didn't use anything younger than two weeks and nothing older than four. So then I split the root systems. Um, and this was just done by teasing apart the roots, pulling them, separating them as even as possible. And then I soaked it in a low nitrate solution. And the main purpose of the low nitrate solution was just so I could uh, give the roots time to repair from the trauma of being separated. Um, they're all tangled up. It, it causes a little bit of damage. So here's the trials. Here's uh, uh, the bean plant. It's sitting within the two beakers. In this case, they're separatory funnels. They just happen to work great. And you can see the roots. Uh, roots on one side, roots on the other side. We got the aeration going in and the hose going into the beakers and the beakers are on the scales. So this is what I, so this ran for about five hours. And um, this is what I saw. So here we have the corn. On the left hand side, we have the difference in nutrient solution in grams. So this is actually the raw data that's coming from the scale that I, um, that I basically just uh, calculated out to figure out the milligrams for, or in this case, the grams per uh, minute. And uh, down here at the bottom, I have the minutes. So um, as you can see, the green is the high nitrate and the gray is the low nitrate. So right off the bat immediately, it's obvious that the corn was, uh, seemed to have a higher hydraulic conductivity on the high nitrate side. It really wanted that nitrate solution where we look down here at the bottom and we see the low nitrate and it doesn't really want to do anything with that. It doesn't, it doesn't like that as much. And that makes sense because nitrate, nitrogen is a limiting factor of plant growth, which was surprising when we did the corn. I mean the bean. Here's the bean and same colors, high nitrate at the bottom and gray is the low nitrate and it's the total opposite. And we have the plant seems to be preferring the low nitrate, the low nitrogen solution. So this was surprising because this is not what the Harbor study said. They said that, you know, they really want that nitrogen. So here's the averages. This is the average milligrams per minute um, of four trials. So we have four, bee plant, four bean plants, four corn plants. And again, it's obvious that the bean really likes the low nitrate solution. The corn really likes the high nitrate solution. And um, I did do some statistical analysis on this and I found out that there is no, there's not statistical significance with this number, uh, with four trials. Um, there's a very close significance with the bean at a 0 0.06 using a t-test. The corn was at a 0.26 using the same t-test, which is very surprising. Um, but every single time I did this trial, these results always showed up the same. Beans like the low nitrate, corn like the high. So this tells me that there's a possibility that I did not have enough trials to actually get uh, statistical significance because I only had N of four. So what's going on right now um, with what I saw? Bean plants, they belong to the family, um, Fabaceae. <laughs> and uh, Fabaceae, um, or as most of us know them, they're called legumes. They have a symbiotic relationship with uh, rhizobia and rhizobia is a group of bacteria that are nitrogen fixers. So what are nitrogen fixers? Nitrogen fixers are able to convert atmospheric nitrogen to a usable nitrogen source that the plant can use. So the normal, uh, in the atmosphere, the air that we breathe, a lot of it is nitrogen and it's found, it, it's found in this nitrate, uh, these lines should be down more, but it's found in the uh, two atoms of nitrogen and they have a triple bond in between the two atoms. And a triple bond is an extremely strong bond. These nitrogen atoms do not want to get apart from each other. And therefore, it's very difficult to break. And the plant can't do it on its own. So it needs these ba this bacteria to be able to convert this nitrogen into ammonia, where the ammonia then gets converted into a nitrate ion. And these bacteria live on the root systems of beans. 
but they don't live on the root systems of corn. So why is this? So basically what's happening um, is the bean plant is trying to avoid getting too much nitrogen. And where the corn, they don't have anyone helping them out. They need to get all the nitrogen they can get from the soil. So what's going on is they're bringing in this low nitrogen to prevent getting too much nitrogen. And too much nitrogen causes real uh, toxicity-like effects on the plant. Uh, you know this if you ever fertilized your lawn and you put too much fertilizer in one spot and it burns. That's because that area has had too much nitrogen. So what's next? Um, as I said in the past, as I said previously, um, I would like to do this with a higher sample number to see if there is a statistical significance that this does happen. And I if there is statistical significance, I would like to compare this to other members of the legume family. See if this carries on between the different plants of the legumes. Uh, then I want to compare that to the nearest relative of the non-legume family. So the one that's closest related to the legumes and see how that compares. And this way I would be able to develop an evolutionary trend of the symbiotic relationship with the legumes. So is there any questions? No questions? <laughs> okay. Uh, did you inoculate the uh, bean plant with the bacteria? I did not. Um, and these bean plants never did touch soil. Um, I don't know much about where the bacteria actually does come from. Um, I just know that it lives on the root system, so I don't know if it's actually in the seed at the time or not. Typically, you have to Yeah, and you know, that's interesting, um, especially because when I did do this in the uh, soil, I had the same result as uh, the bean was still pulling up from that low nitrate side. So it is interesting um, whether this is a genetic encoding for the plant that it just naturally wants to encode to bring out that or whether, it's a, or whether they're getting this outside signal. I do not know the mechanism of what's actually causing the different change other, other than nitrate seems to have an effect on it. Is there someone else? It was me, but I was going to ask something similar. So okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? How many samples do you plan on using to, the, to find the significance? At this time, I would like to do 10. Uh, the Harvard study, they did three but they had statistical significance because they were able to do an ANOVA test on theirs, where theirs was a little bit different. They uh, evaluated a couple of other things where I wasn't concerned about, so I didn't have enough uh, variables to conduct an ANOVA. So I need to get a higher sample size than what uh, the Harvard study did. Any other questions? Okay, um, so, uh, a few acknowledgments. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Christy Duran. Uh, she's been helping me a lot in this. Uh, she's been uh, very encouraging, uh, getting me through this all, um, especially because plants aren't, haven't always been my forte. I've always, you know, looked at these little cells and bacteria under a microscope for all the college. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Randy Black. She was always helping me get these things done. I was doing this during school, uh, so whenever I needed something done, she was more than willing to go and uh, check on my plants. Uh, Brandy Gallegos, he helped me a lot with the statistics. Um, Arwen and Milroy for doing the preliminary rounds and helping me with uh, cons help uh, letting me consult with her for the problems I ran into, and of course the ASU biology department they've been great and um, if you've been around my lab this last semester every so often I had some problem with mold growing on my plants and it did not smell that great so <laughs> I like to thank the biology department for uh, uh, handling me through the. Uh, negative times or the lesser times of uh, my project. So I want to thank you all for coming out. Um, here's just, uh, here's the uh, citation for the paper that I got from that was published through Harvard in 2008 in uh, plant physiology. So I'd like to thank you all coming out for and uh, listening to my talk. <laughs>